Hi everyone, this month's Body Signals Workshop is going to be on RSI, also known as Repetitive Strain Injury. We'll be specifically looking at the upper body with the top three areas being the shoulder, the elbow and the wrist for RSI. Let's talk about the shoulder where the most common injury is a swimmer's shoulder. Swimmer's shoulder is a broad umbrella term for shoulder impingement where the common symptoms are shoulder pain, shoulder instability, reduced range of motion and even muscle weakness or fatigue. So to better understand shoulder impingement though, I think it's important to understand at least the basic anatomy of the shoulder. So our shoulders are comprised of three bones, the scapula, the clavicle and the humerus. So these bones are also known as the shoulder blade, the collarbone and the upper arm bone. And together, these bones make up an incredibly complex and mobile wall and socket joint. So in addition to these three bones though, there are also a key group of muscles known as the rotator cuff, which attaches to and moves the shoulder joint. The rotator cuff is a group of four muscles that surround the joint, lying deep within the shoulder in order to help you move your arm smoothly. So more specifically, these muscles actually contract to keep the ball within your shoulder joint in place when you raise your arm. Now, many ligaments also assist the rotator cuff in holding your shoulder in place as well, which gives you your stability as your shoulder joint moves around. Now you can imagine where the term swimmer's shoulder comes from because the overhead motion of the freestyle swimming action can cause the tendons in the rotator cuff to get pinched underneath the shoulder blade. This pinching and trapping uh, mechanism of the tendons causes inflammation, which leads to the symptoms of pain and restricted use of the affected arm. Whilst swimmers shoulder may be common in swimmers, it's certainly not limited to them, but also in common in people who play baseball, uh, tennis, and particularly what I actually see in practice is construction workers who often have to use uh, their shoulders for repetitive motions. And the most obvious and best way to prevent impingement in the shoulder is to reduce the repetitive motions, but just sometimes it isn't realistic. So that's where chiropractic can come in and be a benefit. Chiropractic adjustments improve posture to make the ears sure that the ears are lined up over the shoulders, the shoulders are down, relaxed and back. This allows for proper joint function and mobility to allow for rehab to strengthen the rotator cuffs over time, which will therefore prevent shoulder impingement.